Child bride, fashionista, mother-in-law to MJ, Priscilla Presley's life has been glamorous, difficult, and very strange indeed. Here's everything you need to know about the King's ex-wife. Elvis Presley's impact on the nation's musical landscape needs no explanation, and it's worth mentioning that his meteoric rise to fame took place well before he met his future wife. In her memoir, Elvis and Me, Priscilla Presley recounted stories of how her classmates at Del Valley Junior High were all head over heels for the singer, but she was less impressed. She liked him, sure, but it certainly wasn't the wild obsession felt by many teens across the country. Uh -huh. Music played an incredibly important role in Priscilla's life, however. Long before Elvis shimmied onto the national stage, she was using music to escape an uncomfortable family life. Her family listened to opera, and she particularly fell in love with Mario Lanza. She'd often daydream of rescuing him from the lonely sadness she heard in his songs, and when she met Elvis, she discovered an instant connection between the two. Lanza happened to be one of Elvis's favorite singers. In Elvis and Me, Priscilla wrote that she and her family moved to West Germany when her stepfather was stationed there by the military. They were isolated by language and location. With housing scarce, they were forced to rent an apartment far from other American families. Far from home and with no friends to speak of, Priscilla later wrote that she came to truly understand loneliness, and when she met Elvis, she was shocked to find a kindred spirit. The story of how it all happened is now quite famous. Spotted by Curry Grant, the 14-year-old Priscilla was escorted to Elvis's West German home for a meet-and-greet. Initially, she said, he wanted to know what the music scene was really like in Germany and whether he'd been forgotten. He was out of the limelight for two years. Um, he didn't know if the fans would still be supporting him. After she reassured him that wasn't the case, Elvis apparently opened up. He claimed he was struggling after the loss of his mother, who had died when she was just 46 years old. Not only that, but his father, who had gone to Germany with him, had started seeing someone, a soon-to-be-divorced mother of three. Priscilla later wrote, He was a world-famous entertainer, a great star, and yet a terribly lonely man. And that, she said, she understood. As strange as it may seem in today's paparazzi-obsessed world, when Ladies Home Journal interviewed Priscilla Presley in 1973, they made a startling observation. Few people actually knew what Elvis's wife looked like. The publication's writer used phrases such as aristocratic bearing and grace and poise to describe her, and at one point called her the most beautifully kept secret in Hollywood. Throughout the interview, Priscilla repeatedly referred to her tendency to do and experience things through the lens of what she saw as masculine and feminine. After moving into Graceland, Priscilla had to find ways to fill the time when Elvis was gone. For a bit, that involved taking karate lessons, but she soon opted for ballet instead after deciding karate didn't feel feminine enough. Priscilla also attended the Patricia Stevens Finishing School, where she said she learned everything she needed to know about makeup. The couple eventually bought a half-million-dollar home in Holmby Hills, and it fell to Priscilla to decorate it. She explained that most of it was done up the way Elvis wanted it, describing a lot of suede, brass, and gaming tables, and adding, You've got to do what a man likes. He's got to live in it, and he's not going to be happy with anything feminine, that's for sure. There was one exception, though, the kitchen, which Elvis didn't much care about. Everyone is defined by something, and for Priscilla Presley, that something is a desire to dress well, really well. She told Vogue that her passion for clothes came from her mother, saying, She was beautiful, always immaculate, always dressed up, and I loved her clothes. Priscilla went on to lament the loss of the idea that when you went out of the house, you dressed up. She told the publication, We live in a world now that is unbelievable. I don't get it. It seems like people have lost pride. I don't know where dignity is. What happened to us? Priscilla added that one of the reasons that she ended up divorcing Elvis was that she wanted to get out into the world. While they were together, most of her clothes were designed by a close friend named Olivia Biz, so the next logical step was to open a boutique together, named Biz and Bo. It was very successful, it was a great experience, and I met a lot of wonderful people. Priscilla described the pride she'd felt not only in the clothes, but a customer base that included big names such as Barbara Streisand. It wasn't cheap, though. Streisand fan site The Streisand Style Files saved some of the receipts from the shop. One receipt for a chiffon shirt, lace jacket, lace blouse, two hats, a slip dress and top, a wrap dress, and another dress came to a whopping $1,107. This was in 1974, too. In 2022, that would set customers back a cool $6,749. Priscilla Presley was less than thrilled when she discovered she had become pregnant. She did want to have children, but felt that it had all happened way too soon. In her memoir, she wrote, I was still uncertain about how my unexpected pregnancy would affect our marriage. I wanted to be beautiful for him. Instead, my debut as Elvis's bride was going to be spoiled by a fat stomach, puffy face, and swollen feet. Priscilla went on to write that Elvis had often told her women use pregnancy as an excuse to, in his words, let themselves go. Unsurprisingly, she felt she had no choice but to do herself serious harm in order to keep herself looking good. She started out by losing 10 pounds, then restricting herself to a single meal a day along with the option of an apple or a hard-boiled egg. 
Priscilla also stopped eating dairy, thinking she could prevent stretch marks. Nevertheless, her relationship suffered during the pregnancy. Around the seven-month mark, Elvis suggested they split. It was a short-lived suggestion, but it devastated Priscilla. You lived his life. You honestly didn't have your own life. You lived his life. In Elvis and Me, Priscilla wrote that even though she was astounded by her daughter every day, her relationship with Elvis grew more and more tense over time. With the benefit of hindsight, she suspected it had something to do with how close he had been to his mother, meaning some uncomfortable feelings had developed now that she was a mother too. A diary entry reflected on his regular use of sleeping pills. Priscilla simply wrote, another lonely night. As Elvis got back to work filming his next movie, Priscilla searched for ways to fill her days. Ballet had always been a favorite, so she began taking dance lessons again. Her teacher brought out the best in her, but she eventually threw in the towel after having an affair with him. Priscilla went on to enroll in karate classes. Gradually, her relationship with her karate coach turned into another affair. She later explained how she came to realize that she was the only one in her marriage who could possibly change. Priscilla wrote, From my adolescence, Elvis had fashioned me into the instrument of his will. I lovingly yielded to his influence, trying to satisfy his every desire. Now, though, this just wasn't enough for Priscilla. Priscilla moved on after her divorce with Elvis. Her next long-term relationship was complicated, though, and the tabloids had a field day when she and her new boyfriend, Marco Garibaldi, were photographed getting up close and personal in Brazil. Garibaldi was a screenwriter and a director who had been recruited into a top-secret intelligence agency when he was younger. He and Priscilla moved in together about the same time as the release of her memoir. Priscilla didn't leave the headlines in a hurry, either, later announcing that she was pregnant. Things got even weirder when the tabloids uncovered an ex-wife who claimed that everything Garibaldi had said was a lie, including his name. The ex-wife said that he wasn't Marco Garibaldi from a long-established Italian family at all, but Marco Garcia from Brazil. She also claimed that attaching himself to a rich woman was one of his life goals. Priscilla called off the planned wedding in the aftermath of these revelations, but the couple stayed together. The birth of their son Navarone Anthony was predictably high profile. When they were interviewed about their new arrival, journalists were quick to point out that their home contained no photos or memorabilia relating to Priscilla's first husband. She explained, I would never do that to Marco or Navarone. People who get involved in Scientology tend to stay involved in Scientology, and Priscilla Presley has been a devout follower for decades. According to Suzanne Finstad's book Child Bride Priscilla Presley, Priscilla's involvement with the church started around Lisa Marie Presley's birthday in 1978. Lisa Marie, like basically every 10-year-old in the late 70s, wanted to meet John Travolta. <laughs> well, that's cool, baby. I mean, you know how it is, rocking and rolling and whatnot. So Presley made it happen. Priscilla's own friendship with Travolta developed during that birthday meeting, which is also when he introduced her to Scientology. She liked the idea of a science-based faith, later saying, He told me how there's a strong ethical bond with the universe, so I joined. I joined blindly because there was a connection there that I felt for it. Ironically, Scientology had previously courted Elvis, who refused to join because he saw it as a get-rich-quick scheme and thought they were only trying to package religion in a way that would sell books. Over the years, rumors have occasionally surfaced suggesting that Presley decided to break off her decades-long relationship with Scientology. She has repeatedly denied this, however, even issuing a formal statement disputing the rumors in 2017. In 1994, Lisa Marie Presley and Michael Jackson stunned the world by announcing their engagement. And in case you're wondering, Priscilla was absolutely against it from the very beginning, for some fairly surprising reasons. Priscilla saw her daughter making the same mistake she did, namely marrying someone super famous who was never going to be out of the spotlight. She'd been there, done that, and it wasn't the kind of life she wanted for her daughter. She later told The Guardian, In a strange way, maybe history was repeating itself. As her mom, though, I was concerned as I could see it could be a disaster. At that point, the right thing to do would have been to bite my tongue, but I didn't bite my tongue. Priscilla added that she was aware that Lisa Marie hadn't spent much time in the real world. She had grown up in Graceland and then moved to Neverland so her mother wanted her to get some real-life experience first. Priscilla has also said that she held her doubts about Jackson in general. She explained, You know, I just didn't know if it was authentic or not. I just worried about if she was doing the right thing. I worried about his agendas. Not many people get to see their lives reenacted on the big screen, and Priscilla Presley seems to have taken it in her stride. In 2022, she and actor Olivia de Jong had nothing but good things to say about Baz Luhrmann's movie Elvis. So I'm sitting there watching this movie and going, God, I, I, I wish you could see this. But it wasn't all good, and Priscilla also said there were some scenes that were difficult for her to watch, especially when her on-screen counterpart asked Elvis to get treatment for his worsening addictions. Priscilla spoke more about this with Today, saying she found it equally hard to relive the conversations Elvis had with his manager, Colonel Tom Parker. She explained that it had been heartbreaking living with Elvis as he struggled to shake off his heartthrob on the beach image in pop culture, which he was never allowed to do. 
And so living that with him and the, watching the movie, it brought back a lot of memories. If you need help with an eating disorder or know someone who does, help is available. Visit the National Eating Disorders Association website or contact Nita's Live Helpline at 1-800-931-2237. You can also receive 24-7 crisis support via text. Send Nita to 741-741.